Hey everyone, I'm Gunnix here and welcome back to a brand new video here on the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make rag dolls in Godot. The first thing you want to make sure of before you do get started is that you have a rigged model made, exported and ready to use in your Godot project. Once you've got your model ready, you can get started. So first off, I'm going to create a new inherited scene of my model. Before we go ahead and make the ragdoll for our model, you want to make sure that your model is properly scaled to how you would like it to appear in your game. Something I commonly need to do for my games is scale down my character models because I end up making them too big in Blender. So if your nodes are structured similarly to mine, I recommend you select the node above your model skeleton 3D node, for me it's called armature, and then scale the untransform of it to what's perfect for you. To know what's a good scale for your model, you could also import it into one of your game scenes and use an object such as your player as a scale reference so you can get an idea of the values you'd need to set for your character's transform scale. For me, I'll be setting my model's transform scale to 0.2 on the X, Y, and Z axis since it's a close size to my player. Also, I recommend you position your model towards the grid floor of your scene if you need to after rescaling it for neatness. If you're wondering why I recommend you do this before making the ragdoll, I'll explain why in a bit. If you don't need to scale your model up or down, then you're already fine. So once you're happy with your character scale, select your model skeleton 3D node. Upon selecting your skeleton 3D node, you should notice a button appear above your scene view labelled as skeleton 3D. Click on this button and you'll see the option to create a physical skeleton. Select that option and your ragdoll will be automatically created for you. In your hierarchy, you should notice a bunch of new nodes show up under the label Physical Bone Simulator 3D. All the nodes underneath the Physical Bone Simulator 3D are your physical bones with collision shapes as children of these bones. If you scaled your character model down like me, you'll probably notice that the collision shapes for your physical bones are larger than they should be. This is where you'll need to scale and position each bone and collision shape correctly. You may even need to adjust your bones collision shapes even if you didn't change your model scale since generating a physical skeleton isn't always going to be perfect. I do recommend you try scale and position the collision shapes as accurately as you can. The reason as to why I recommended you guys scale your models correctly before generating the bones earlier is because if you were to generate your bones and then scale your model for your game scene afterwards, the bones would reset their size to the regular model size and would end up causing issues for the ragdoll's physics. So making sure your model is correctly scaled beforehand so you can adjust the bones and their collision shapes correctly is the best way to go. By the way, the standard shape used for the bone collision shapes are capsule shapes, however you can change the collision shape if you like. Another thing I recommend is to make sure after scaling your bone collision shapes is that they aren't intersecting with each other to reduce the potential of there being physics issues. When checking the collision shapes, I like to disable the meshes of my model so I can see everything properly. Physical bone nodes, the nodes which are created after generating your ragdoll, have a bunch of properties you can mess around with to see what's right for your model. Whilst messing around with the bone properties isn't necessary, if you notice your ragdoll not behaving as intended, it doesn't hurt to mess around with these properties. Sometimes I play around with the joint type since depending on the model you're making, changing the joint type of some bones may help get the result you want. Once you're happy with your ragdoll, we can now create a script for it. Select your parent node, scroll down on your inspector menu and select where it says script empty and create a new script. Select the location of where you want your script to be created. For me, I'm just saving it in my folder named scripts. And then once you have your location selected, go ahead and create your script. We won't be needing the process function so you can remove that, but in the ready function however, you want to type in the following. Okay, so first off, you want to type dollar sign and then type the path to your physical bone simulator 3D node and then type dot physical bones start simulation. This is how we make our ragdoll's bone simulation start. If we don't do this, then our ragdoll will be stuck in a T-pose. Now, if you go ahead and place your ragdoll into our game scene and go test it out, as you can see, the ragdoll works. If you don't like how your ragdoll is acting, you can mess around with the properties of your physical bones or even try scale your bones collision shapes better. Something else you can do if you want is change the physics engine from default Godot physics to Jolt physics, since sometimes I find that Jolt produces more favorable results. Before I do end the tutorial, one last thing I want to mention is let's say for example you have a function that spawns a ragdoll of an enemy when it's killed. 
Well, in your ready function of the ragdoll script, you should have an await function with a tiny wait timer, like 0.05 seconds, so then your ragdoll actually gets set in place before it spawns into your scene. The reason as to why is because I've found that if I don't do this, when my ragdoll is set to spawn at the, posi at the position of where my enemy died, the ragdoll won't appear in that position, but adding a tiny await timer at the beginning of my ragdoll script fixes that. Anyways guys, that's in this video, hopefully you all did learn something about ragdolls in Godot, even if your ragdoll isn't perfect right now, you can always problem solve and improve on your skills, polish it up more as you continue working on your game. I'll leave a link down below to the Godot docs where you can learn more about ragdolls if you like. Thank you all for watching once again and I'll see you all next time.